Hey guys, welcome to our four part video series on building this multi-purpose small parts crosscut sled. This is a fun build and I think you guys will enjoy it. We're gonna break this up into four different videos. In this first video, we're gonna go ahead and tackle the main sled. So if you turn to page two in the plans, it gives us a construction overview. And let's take a look at the parts we have to contend with to get this part built. So we have a main platform or a base that's built out of plywood. And we're gonna cover that with laminate. Here we have red. You can use whatever color you want. I'll probably use black because we seem to have a lot of it floating around. And then we have a rear and front bridge. Those are not only to give you something to hold on to as you push the sled through the blade, they also hold the two parts of the base together once we make that first kerf to create the slot for the blade. On the bottom side, we have a pair of miter bars and those are to guide it along the sled. And we also have a block that has some T-track in it. And that will sit along that rear fence uh, and that will be for attaching some accessories we'll make in later videos. Um, we'll make that here and we'll make the simple stop block. It seems to be a pretty common accessory that most uh, crosscut sleds have. So we'll go ahead and make that here as well. So let's go ahead and grab our safety gear and we'll start over at the table saw by cutting plywood to the size. All right, so here at the table saw, we're gonna go ahead and start by creating the sled base. And this is made out of half inch plywood. And here I'm gonna use Baltic birch. You could use whatever half inch plywood you have. However, with shop projects, I like to use Baltic birch. It's consistent and you don't find voids in it like you do in lesser quality plywood. It is a little bit more, but for a shop jig that I'm gonna keep around for a long time, I like to make that little bit of extra investment. So looking at the plans, we have to cut the sled base 16 inches by 18 inches. So I'm gonna start by making the 18 inch cut first. Then I'll readjust my fence and flip that piece I just cut to cut the 16 inch width. All right, so now we have our base cut size. And while we're here at the table saw, let's go ahead and take care of the two bridges. We have that rear bridge and we have that front bridge. And you can see that those are both listed as two and a half inches tall. So I'm just going to make that as one blank. I have a piece of hard maple here that we'll go ahead and rip to two and a half inches and then we'll head over to the bandsaw to shape them and cut them apart. All right, so before we start cutting anything here at the bandsaw, I went ahead and laid out both the shape of the rear bridge down here and the front bridge on the opposite end. Those are simple to do. Uh, if you look at the front view on that page, we have the dimensions for an inch and a quarter height, which I've marked out. And then we have the points of our 45 degree angles and I laid those out. So what we're gonna do is start by cutting the rear of the front bridge off first using the miter gauge. Then I will cut the end on the rear bridge. Then I'm gonna go ahead and set the fence to make these two cuts. And those are the same measurements. So we'll set the fence, make a cut, flip the stock over and make another cut. Then I'll come back and freehand those 45s. Any saw marks we're left with on this, we can go ahead and clean up with sandpaper or maybe a rasp of file. And the same way with this front bridge. After I cut that to width, I'll just freehand these 45s and we'll clean the, those up as well. And while we're here, let's go ahead and take care of rounding the corners on the sled base. Those are inch and a half radius. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mark those out with a compass and we'll cut those. And again here, we're gonna cut those on the outside of the line. And any cleanup we have to do will be pretty easy with some sandpaper, uh, maybe a rasp or a file. And I'll probably use an edge sander for that. All right, so now that we have everything out of shape, we want to take care of any blade marks that are left from the bandsaw. And like I mentioned, I touched most of this up on the edge sander. It's pretty easy to do, and I was able to clean up the corners that I cut on the base of the sled as well. But if you don't have an edge sander, and even if you do, there's some places you can't reach with that. So I'm just gonna clean those up with a file. And honestly, this is just a vanity thing. The saw marks don't really mean anything, but I like it to look as good as I can. 
So once those are ready to go, we can go ahead and apply our laminate to our base. Now let's talk about the laminate real quick. Laminate is readily available for most home centers. They will hold rolls of it. Or you can go ahead and head over to a countertop supply store. A lot of the times they will have small scraps of laminate that you can buy very inexpensively. And if you can, get them to cut it to size. Uh, I cut mine about an eighth inch overall, bigger, maybe a quarter of an inch. And that way, once we mount it, we'll head over to the router table and flush trim it all. So let's go ahead and get this mounted. So to attach the laminate down to our plywood sled, I like to use contact adhesive. You can buy it in brushing form, but honestly, a can of spray adhesive is about the best way to go. So what we'll do is we'll get even coverage on the laminate, and we'll set that off to the side, then we'll get even coverage on the top side of the sled. Once that contact adhesive is dry to the touch, it'll be two or three minutes, we'll go ahead and place that on there and we'll roll it down with a J-roller. Okay, looks like pretty good coverage. So we'll let that dry. Cover this guy. All right, we'll let these dry to the touch and we'll apply them together. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply laminate to the second side as well. Not only is that going to allow that sled to slide a little bit smoother across the table saw, but it's also gonna make sure that nothing bows on here over time. The laminate on the bottom side will help keep everything balanced so it will stay nice and flat. Once that's done, we'll head over to the router table and flush trim this to match the sled. It's just a bit straight bit that has a bearing installed on the top, and that bearing is gonna ride along our plywood sled in the middle and trim the laminate to match. If you don't have a router table, however, don't worry. There's no reason you couldn't trim this with a handheld router with either a laminate trimming bit or a flush trim bit. Anytime you are flush trimming laminate, you can get adhesive built up along the edge or on the bearing of the router bit. So take a couple minutes, brush off any adhesive that comes along the edge as you're routing. And if there is stuff that gets stuck down that you just can't get off, grab some acetone and just wipe it down. And then that adhesive will release almost immediately. So it leaves us here. We have a perfectly smooth trimmed base and we're ready to put that rear and the front bridge on. These are held down with screws. So we have to lay out our screw locations and pre-drill them. And I'm gonna actually do the pre-drilling in two different steps. I'm gonna lay out the screw location on the top and I'll pre-drill with a fairly small bit and I'll plunge that all the way through. And then I will clamp the bridge in place and then I will switch over to a pre-drill bit that has a countersink on it. And we'll drill those through on the bottom side and then drive the screws in to lock these bridges in place. So because all of the bridges are made out of three quarter inch stock, we're gonna lay out our screw holes to be centered on that. So three eighths of an inch. And I like to just use a sliding bevel or sliding square to lay that out. Okay. And we'll lay that out up top too. And then on the plans, you can see in that front view, it outlines where the screw locations go. So our first screws for this rear bridge are gonna be at an inch and a half. So we'll mark that. And that'll be an inch and a half from each end. And then our next one is five and a half inches in from that. So seven inches in from the edge seven inches from this edge. Okay. So now we'll pre-drill those. Clamp that rear bridge in place. 
And the big thing with this is you want to make sure it's centered left and right, and you want it to be flush to the back edge. Now we can pre-drill these. All right. All right, now we can attach it down with screws. And these are number eight inch and a quarter screws, and I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on the ends of them, just because we're going into hard maple. Let's give them their best chance of success. There we go. All right, now we're gonna repeat that same process to get the front bridge in place. And then we'll head over to the table saw and get those runners installed. All right, so once we have that front and back bridge attached to the sled, we can go ahead and add the sled, the runners that are right in the miter gauge slots. To do that, we need a couple things here at the table saw. First is I like to grab a square. We wanna verify that everything's square before we attach those runners. We're also gonna need runners, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. The first thing I wanna do is double check and make sure that this fence, which is where my work pieces are gonna ride once this is complete, is square to the blade. Now this table saw is set up well. The fence is parallel to the blade. So if my fence on my sled is perpendicular to my fence, I know that everything is square. So I'm just gonna double check that with the sled pushed tight up against the fence and we're good. So I like to use one of these plastic squares. It's a drafting square. And they happen to be really accurate, at least I found. You can use standard square as well, or even a framing square. If you're gonna use a framing square, just double check and verify that it is indeed square. So once I have checked this and we're good, I know that my fence is square to the fence on my sled, we can go ahead and look at the miter gauge bars. Now the bars I'm gonna use are the ones that are called out in the plans and they're Incra bars. Uh, and I like them, there's a couple of features on them that make them really interesting to use uh, and accurate. And if you take a look at this box down here on the plans, uh, there's the how-to Meyer bar installation. It kind of outlines it, but the Incra bars have these little wedges in here. And those wedges are to adjust the tightness of this miter gauge bar in the slots on your table saw. So we need access to that screw head because as you tighten that down, it pulls that wedge up and spreads the bar out so you get a good tight fit. So what we're gonna do is we are going to position these bars. Let me take that screw out first. And we're gonna put the bars into the miter slots. Get the washer out of there. I'm gonna align them with the edge of the cast iron top on the saw. Okay. And we're going to do two bars on here. Now, I positioned the fence so that the blade is in the center of the sled. So in this case, it happens to be about 7 and 15 16, so let's call it. So when I position this up against the fence, those bars are where they need to be for this to be centered on the blade. So what we'll do is we will use double-sided tape and we will apply that on top of the bars. And I think you guys can see where I'm going with this. Position those. I'm gonna have to reposition these bars to make sure that they're aligned to the front edge again. Okay, so now we have the sticky side up on our double stick tape. We can go ahead and position our sled and we're gonna not only make sure we have it up against the fence, but I'm gonna position it so those runners are aligned with this front edge it's closest to me scooch that runner up just a hair now we can press down we'll slide that guy out 
And there we go. Our bars are held in the correct position. Push those down real quick just to make sure they're stuck. Sometimes those miter gauge slots on your saw are too deep and double-sided tape won't work. And in that case, just throw a couple washers underneath the miter gauge bars before you put them in and make them a little proud of the surface and that'll work well. So now that we have those in, we go ahead and grab the same bit I pre-drilled these with. I'm gonna go ahead and just mark the mounting locations. And I'm not trying to go real deep here. I just wanna mark these locations. So I have three locations where I'm gonna install little pan head screws to attach the runners to the sled. But I also have the two locations where I'm going to drill through completely with this bit. And those are for the Allen head screws for those miter bar adjustment slides. So I will drill that one through completely. And we'll just gently mark the other locations. Okay. Now we can pull these miter bars off. All right. Now you see we have four locations for mounting screws. One, two, three, and four. And then we have the two through holes. And those are for, like I said, those Allen head mounting screws for that wedge that will tighten up the, uh, the miter gauge bar. And we will drill those through completely with a 3 8 inch bit. We'll do that over at the drill press in a little bit once I get these uh, all pulled off and cleaned up. And then we'll come back here with these runners attached to make our first cut. All right, so I have the runners installed completely. And I've also went ahead and installed the little wedges that allow us to tighten up those miter bars. Now, one thing I found with miter bars when you put them on the bottom of the sleds for the first time, they tend to be a little snug, so I'm not gonna tighten these down yet. Uh, and in addition, I've went ahead and added a little bit of wax to the bottom of the sled just to make it slide a little bit easier. So now let's slide the fence out of the way. We can check the fit. Okay. And that feels pretty good. So if those runners loosen up a little bit over time, I have those access holes that I drilled at the drill press that I can tighten up those little wedges and I can fine tune everything from up here. So at this point, we can go ahead and turn this on, raise the blade and make our first cut. And then we'll head back over to the bench and talk about that, the bar slot that will go here with the T-Track. All right, so with that first cut made, we basically have created a cross-cut sled. Now, plans call for us to add one more thing, and that is to add a plywood fence. And I've already cut that to size, and that's pretty simple to do. It's just cut the length and then rip the width. And then we're gonna cut a groove in here. And I did this over at the table saw with a dado stack. You can do it that way. If you don't have a dado stack, you can make multiple passes with your regular blade, or you can use your router table. The whole goal here is to fit this T-track in there nice and easily. That way you'll be able to screw it in and we'll attach it to the sled. Now, one thing to note, on the plans this has this T-track as one piece and that would work just fine. However, if you have a saw stop, you don't want to accidentally trip your safety mechanism by cutting into the aluminum miter track. So create two pieces of track like I have here and space them out a little bit just to make sure you stay away from that blade. So we can go ahead and screw these guys down into place. Okay, there we go. So now we can go ahead and install it on the sled. Now we'll lay out the whole locations. So we have an 
inch and an eighth and two and three eighths. And we'll throw four screws in each side. All right, and because we have that clamped in place already, I'm just gonna go right to the pre-drill bit and then we'll install screws. All right, so there we go. Now we have the crosscut sled done. In the next video, we'll go ahead and start making some of the accessories on those. And I think we'll probably start with the stop block, and maybe the small parts tray. So take a look for that video.